Hello lovely people, welcome to Book Chat, the weekly roundup of stuff I've read at some point in my power. Sophie Vlogs! I've got three books to talk about this week and I'm gonna jump in, starting with False Values by Ben Aronovich. I actually said his surname correctly. <laughs> Um, number one, this is a glow-in-the-dark cover, which is really cool. This is the eighth book in the Rivers of London series. Um, I I really enjoy this series. It is one of those like solid, dependable series where every time I, a new one comes out and I pick it up, I know I'm going to have a good time. We're following Peter Grant, who is uh, essentially like a magical policeman. Like he uh, he works for like this little unit in London, which deal with like magical supernatural stuff. Um, this was interesting. I didn't enjoy this one as much as some of the other books in the series, but I still had a good fun time. Um, each time the each book focuses sort of it has like a handful of different topics that we're like exploring. This one's very much exploring like technology, like coding, like big like technology like companies, stuff like that. Um, we also have like this whole theme of like Ada Lovelace, Charles Babbage, like early computer engineering, stuff like that. Um, and it was fun. I think one thing was that um, the start of this was just a little bit jarring because you're thrown in and time has passed since the last book ended um, and then the narrative sort of flips between chapters alternate between like a sort of contemporary point and then like a, a past point so you start off and you're like you get this information and you're like oh that's strange and then as things go back and forth you get pieced together all the information to bring you back up to a contemporary point and then you sort of go forward from there I think maybe I might have preferred it if we just had that chronologically I didn't entirely see the benefit of flip it around like that because it kind of confused me which was slightly aided by the fact that this technology company essentially Peter Grant is undercover at this swanky little technology company but they use a lot of like weird vocab for the technology company like the people who work there are referred to as mice and there's loads of like Hitchhiker's Guide references stuff like that um but just like a lot of the vocabulary to do with the workplace it just took me a I did enjoy this, but it took me like a couple of chapters before I like settled in. Whereas I go into these expecting to just be like on board from the first page. So that's not like a critique, it's just like it took me a little bit to be like, okay, where are we at? What's going on? Like <laughs> and I didn't realise we were flashing back in time initially. I was just like, this doesn't make any sense. And then I got on board. Um, that said, I had a thoroughly fun time. We were exploring, there's been like a building plot line which sort of culminated in the last book. So we're, we're sort of, there is a thread from that that is left open, but we're on a very much a different topic here, um, which was interesting. We are slowly also expanding our understanding of how other countries deal with magic stuff, which is always fun. So like there's a whole thread of how like um, we're introduced to like this sort of new American element which is good and there was a short story before this which was set in Germany which um had a similar thing where like one of the fun things was like getting a better, better glimpse of how other countries are also managing all of the stuff that's going on in this one thing I've never quite understood about this series is it's very much like it's just the folly in London that seems to be dealing with these things and I don't really understand why there is no magic apparently going on anywhere else in the country <laughs> or if there is we don't hear about it and I'm like surely there should be someone in like Scotland and Wales dealing with things also and like the north of England I don't know um but it is the whole point is it's very London based like London infuses this and I get that that's one of the selling points it's just I was thinking about it during this read and I was like why or is it just never mentioned I don't know but suffice to say um entirely lovely fun time was had four out of five stars just like a couple of niggles at the edges but a good time that was followed by a classic I decided to read a classic piece of gothic literature. So um, this is like a collection of three gothic novels. Uh, I have read Frankenstein. I decided to go for The Castle of Otranto by Walpole because I think this was like the first gothic novel. If not the first, very much an early, early gothic one. Um, it was really interesting reading this and seeing like the seeds of things that have become gothic staples. So um, this book starts off with such a great opening and this isn't a spoiler because it's literally like the first page but it's like this guy who lives in the castle of Toronto he's gonna marry his son and heir to this princess 
and then like on the wedding day his son is crushed to death by a giant helmet and then it just like goes from there and I was like what a cracking opening to a novel um unfortunately it didn't keep up that sort of like I hoped that the whole book would just be like wild from start to finish it had it was like very much of its time there's like a lot of like talking between people that could have been shortened um he also doesn't believe in speech marks which like took a little bit of adjusting um essentially like what I enjoyed about this was those like real gothic things so like um gothic often has like you know a castle or like an old building that is like key there's like these supernatural elements coming in there's like real wild over-the-top emotions um and I had like a thoroughly fun time I gave it a three out of five stars because I think objectively as like a reading experience it was not always the most fun because like of the particular style is just not like a particular style which like I hugely connect with um but it was fun and I'm glad that I have read it because you know like sometimes you read things to like get a better understanding of like genre and stuff like this rather than like I'm gonna have a really great time and this is gonna be my new favorite book you know but um I enjoyed it it was it didn't quite I wished that it had continued to be as wacky as the opening was but I still I still had fun time um, and then finally, this is Lyra Celtica, an anthology of representative Celtic poetry by Elizabeth A. Sharp. I hadn't realised this was gifted to me. I hadn't realised this is actually like, um, it's like a reprint of a book that was published in the late 1800s. A lot of it is like the scanned pages of the original book, which means that like, um, if anyone has issues with like reading certain fonts and stuff, the font size and everything does ve vary wildly within this, so just like bear this in mind. But this is what it says on the tin, um, anthology of Celtic writing and poetry. Um, it starts off very early Celtic and it comes up to what was contemporary for the time, so like 1800s. Um, it's kind of hard to review collections like this. Essentially, I think it did a good job of what it set out to do, which was to be an anthology of Celtic writing. It had a really good, um, broad spectrum of specifically so like we had Breton poetry in this which was really great we had Manx poetry in this so like a lot of the time when people do like Celtic anthologies they can often just be like Wales, Ireland, Scotland whereas like also including Manx and Breton and stuff like that I really appreciated um it goes across a vast spectrum of time so it starts off in very like early poetry and then comes up to 1800s um a lot of the poems are to do with um a like the physicality of the land so like poetry about the specific celtic lands and how they you know the nature and that sort of stuff um b uh love whether that's like lost love or like will you marry me love like very much romantic love in all of its forms and then um that's kind of it that's most of the like poetry and then there's like um some of the earlier poems are like mythology based and i really enjoyed those that were exploring like tales from um like epic poems from this time and stuff that was really great um i thought this was fine I, a lot of the poetry in this is not the type of poetry that really excites me so it was interesting to read and interesting to compare and contrast the different ways that like um what are recurring themes across all of these celtic lands what are certain themes that seem to only be popping up in like um welsh poetry versus irish poetry and stuff like that um not a lot of the poems were ones that really like make my heart sing but there were some there were some um and yeah i think it was interesting it's introduced me to a lot of names that i've not read before and like sometimes names that i've heard of but not actually read that sort of thing so like i'm glad i read it it's sort of a similar case to this where it's like glad i read it bit of a better understanding didn't make my heart sing but interesting <laughs> so yes um have you read any of these what is oh here's a question of the day what is the wildest like opening to a book you've ever read because i do think being crushed to death by a giant's helmet which doesn't get explained for a long time um was actually really great <laughs> So like, have you read any books where it's like, page one or two, it's like, boom, and you're like, oh, wow. Um, I would actually really love to know that. Um, otherwise, I hope you're having the loveliest of days. I'll see you next time, something different.